Hey there beautiful people, I'm here at EGX Rest and what I've been doing is talking to developers and educators today so I've been talking to the developers of games and people, representatives from university to get them to tell me the best way to get into games. So have a look at what they've said uh, and hopefully it'll be helpful to you. So I got into working games, uh, I started as an um, intern working at Introversion after, during my third year. After that, after I graduated, I sort of took a year doing my own sort of small projects and my own games. After that, um, because Introversion knew me, um, they sort of you know, sent me an email, they knew I was doing sort of like freelance work, and I just went, hey, we have a small job, do you want to do it? I went, yes, and then since then I've just gotten more and more work from them, more or less. So I got into making games based on that I used to play a lot of games when I was younger. So things like Nintendo 64, I used to love Zelda Ocarina of Time. And alongside that I used to be really into art and just creating paintings or drawings. Um, originally I went to university to do fine art, um, but I quickly realised that that just wasn't for me and I was just a little bit more techie. So basically I got into making games just by looking at courses and realizing that having an art background and combining that with a technical background you could make some really cool stuff for games. I got into it when I was in stuff like high school then just followed it on from college to uni to then pretty much since then. Making like a small prototype game because a friend said oh you can I want to do this this and this. I built a small prototype then he then it's doing that from there, but then that project kind of got shelved. But I've then I moved on to other projects, stuff like Stanley's Adventure Through Space, uh, to my current one, Elements AR. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and then I just knew I was okay at art, and I thought, what can I do to make money out of this? <laughs> and there were a lot of courses that were doing games, but we decided, we both went on to the Dinnington course, um, for games design and animation and I just really enjoyed it and now we've got a game. <laughs> Here we are! I have uh, very boring co uh, college speeches so I've started painting uh, things on my speeches in college and I've sent uh, paintings to, to many developers and one of them picked my, me up and how I'm here. Make your own games, have your own products. Uh, doesn't matter what the size there are, but like show your your particular focus. So if if you're an audio, oh, like find a small team, work work together, make something that shows how your process works. Like so it would probably be to sort of work on your own pro products, like build a portfolio of work that you could that you could conceivably just take to a person and say, hey, this is the thing that I have made, um, and just have something that shows that you have experience working in games, whether it's your own games or it's like a small Unity project or if it's like here is a mod for like um, something that's out there like Star Wars or whatever. Um, anything that has like, there are a few games that have mod tools nowadays but um, they're still out there and a lot of them well, you'd be able to show regardless of what discipline you're actually looking to work in. Try. <laughs> really hard. Um, the best thing I could say to get into making games is not always to play them because what I found is we played a lot of games and you almost feel like it's going to be unreachable, like you'll never be able to make that level of game. The best thing you can do is start from scratch, start from the bottom. Um, your work will look like crap all the time but that pushes you to get a lot better. Yeah and what we found really useful was just looking online at tutorials, yeah. um, following step by step guides, going wrong, learning from your mistakes. Um, Feedback constant feedback from people on forums like this um, Facebook group called 10,000 Hours and always posting your work because any critique is a good critique because you're getting feedback yeah. all the time. And also I'd say get your portfolio out there at an early stage yeah. because you never know who you're going to meet so we come to events like EGX or Res all the time we have for the last four or five years and each time we've come we've had a portfolio online. Um, give them business cards out or Network. exchange emails yeah. with people, let them look at your portfolio and they can give you feedback or they can even offer you a job or say yeah this is good, this is bad. Just don't be ashamed to show what you've got even if you think it's not that good yet because everyone always gets better. Like we never thought we'd be here with a game, no. did we? And couldn't even be about four years ago. Yeah, so. that's it. Yeah. So you will get there. Think about what you want to make, then 
let's do research on to see if it's been done before if it's not find out why then if it has been done but not in such a scale then try to build it just using small prototype text stuff like unity unreal depending on what your programming level is but then just build upon what you you know and what you've done before the most important thing uh, to get somewhere you need to you need to make things don't think not only think about them but making things you need to still improve yourself and uh, make new things over and over again to, to and uh, trying new things to have more ideas and and be better artists in my in my situation for example okay so that's what the developers I spoke to said but I also spoke to some educators, none of whom were brave enough to appear on camera, so I'm just going to kind of paraphrase what they told me. So I did speak to uh, the University of Huddersfield and Teesside University as well. Both are quite well known for their gaming courses in the UK. They asked for pretty much one thing in particular, which was grafters. They didn't mention the portfolios, they didn't mention what education they'd done before. They wanted people, the thing they were looking for to set people apart was that they were willing to work hard. Not that they completed assignments, that they had made things in their own time and they were proud of them. So that is something you need to throw in there as well. Right, so I hope all that information has been useful to you. Uh, thanks for watching. Any comments or questions, leave them below. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Laters.